What's up, Liron here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to paint this scene. There's a strong contrast, strong sunlight, and lots of beautiful saturated colors. So let's get started. Okay, so we'll start with the drawing process. And uh, we're gonna focus on the large shapes. Uh, and the division here is quite simple. So if you look at the ground, uh, we have one line that's the shadow, that's almost horizontal, in fact, and then it connects to the bottom of the wall. Now the bottom of the wall connects to the very corner of the painting. You know I don't like to do that as much. I'm gonna go for slightly above, not a lot. And what I'm gonna do now is just pull one long line all the way to the top. And that'll be this side of the building. The drawing is fairly simple. Now you wanna get the perspective right. So to me it seems like the vanishing point is somewhere around here. Then we have this kind of line that kind of line and you see I'm just establishing if I have the vanishing point here all lines that are parallel are coming out of it or converge to it depending on how you want to look at it psychologically so uh, I'm just doing some lines to help me uh, place in the different details that I'm gonna need now all of this is in the shadow there isn't too much to draw here as well the building is actually starting here this is a shadow on the street so this is the start of the building we have this kind of pole here. The challenge is gonna be bring out enough interest and details in the shadow without overdoing it. There are a few windows I wanna place here in the shadow. One here, another one somewhere around here. And then we have this doorway somewhere around here. A couple of other windows here and there that I may move around or play with their composition. Now we have this window here, like so. As long as I'm adhering to the composition, I don't have to worry too much about how accurate or inaccurate I am. Now it does have these uh, doors to the window that are beautiful, with a beautiful green color that I love. So that's that. And then we have this uh, entrance to uh, whatever that is, the store or something like that. This kind of uh, table. And I'm not going to move anything. I'm going to keep the composition pretty much as it is. I just may move this shadow a bit to the right, like this. And we have a couple of details here that we're gonna get later on with the paint, but this is really all you need. Now we do have some chairs here in the foreground that I will keep in, okay? I will put those in as well. And there's a gap here that I would want to preserve. And I think that's pretty much it. We're ready to paint. Let's rearrange some stuff and get started. So the very first wash, here we go. Um, now what I usually care about in this wash is showing all three of my primaries. Uh, so I'll make sure to put in a lot of pure yellows, pure reds, pure blues. I find that doing this leads to an impression that I love, okay? This is, a lot of it is a matter of taste. So you don't have to do things the same way I do, do things the way you love uh, to do them. So I'm gonna start with this wall that's in the light and um, I'm gonna start with a bit of red, add a bit more yellow to it. I think I want it to be more yellow. Now, sometimes this may seem very strong, but actually once you start really paying attention, you'll, you'll, you'll see that it, it dries up much lighter than, uh, than it appears right now. So you don't have to worry about that too much. Now I will use this uh, opportunity with uh, the window here to show some pure blue. So I'm just gonna grab some of that. You don't need a lot, this is phthalo blue. It's so strong that <laughs> the moment you touch it basically contaminates your whole paper. I'm gonna clean it off my brush and then come back to some of these warmer colors. Now more at the back, I'm gonna add a bit more red. Now, despite this part, this area being in the shadow, I will start with a with some light and happy paints. And the reason for that is that um, later on when I glaze on top of it with uh, a blue or a, a cooler shadow color, uh, this bright reds and, and yellows will show through, okay? Because it's watercolor, these things tend to show through uh, and the result is beautiful. So this is what we're gonna do. Kind of lost the highlight there that I was planning on keeping, but that's fine. A bit more red. Let's go a little wild here with this part. The building has a bit of a pink uh, color to it, so maybe I'll add a bit of that here, here and there. <laughs> um, and then once we get to the floor, 
Um, on the left, I'll probably use a bit of a pure blue, like this. And again, it may seem strong, but uh, it's it's okay. It's all gonna blend together and look really lovely in the end. Uh, and here on the right, I'll probably switch to uh, a more yellow, okay? So from that building that was fairly red, here I'm gonna switch to a more yellowy look, like so because the ground reflects the light a little better perhaps, so this is why I do that. Now I want to go back into the shadowy area and put in those windows, wet and wet. Um, and I think this is pretty much all there is to it. I may lift back some uh, paint here. And the more I paint, the more I want to do these first washes in a very loose and free and fun manner. I find that I just enjoy it better. Um, and now we're pretty much done with this. I will add a bit more warmth to this uh, floor because I don't want it. It has a bit of coolness from the um, blue that I don't really want. So I'm going to get rid of that like that. And now you see a very happy and maybe even confused first wash, but that's fine. Uh, the next layer is going to really create some nice differentiations between the lights and the shadows. Okay, so we're going to allow this to rest and dry and come back and continue. Okay, so this is now ready for another wash and what I'm actually going to do is start with this left side. I'm going to paint all the way down to this shadow and connect it to this shadow and chairs and everything, okay? So we have to be uh, a little quick with this wash, in fact. Um, and I don't want to gray it out too much yet. So I'm going to start for the top areas with a bit of uh, orange, just a bit of yellow and blue yellow and red, sorry, and I'll uh, alternate between the two, okay? Now it has to be quite dark um, if we want to convey that uh, it's all in the shadow, so I'm actually gonna use much more paint and I will probably need some assistance from the blue, okay? Assistance because blues make it a little easier to produce darker values. Now let's get rid of that part on the right this is a bit, can be a bit challenging because this is the most significant negative shape in this uh, painting pretty much. Um, now I want to go back with some blue here and darken that window as well so we're still preserving that cool and warm uh, balance that we had earlier. Uh, but we will need to start uh, darkening and possibly uh, muting this down a bit so more red more yellow and a bit more uh, of the blue and possibly darken it up a little more okay uh, like so and some of these things you have no choice but to try and, and if it's not dark enough then worst case you come back later on with another uh, additional glaze and you just have to get it to work okay but um, it's best if you can get it right the first time obviously but that's just sometimes it's a big challenge so don't worry if you don't, continuing along this way. Now here I have to start thinking about um, the shadow that I'm gonna connect to. And also, I'll have to put in that additional window here, like this. There are no highlights here at all, so I'm gonna just make sure I don't leave any, because there aren't, there really aren't. Uh, this is all in the shadow and when something's in the shadow you want to be consistent about that for the most part. So I'm going to place that in here, like so. Now I'm not going to move away from this area until I'm, I'm pleased with everything in it. So I'll probably do some, uh, with very thick paint, I'll do some wet and wet. So here we have this kind of a ba balcony. Um, here we have uh, another one that I may add some more details to later on in wet and wet. Uh, we have this uh, window here that I wanna uh, place in as well. And another balcony. We're gonna add some more details to that later on in wet and wet, but uh, yeah. And now this doorway that's much, much darker. I'm gonna use a bit more blue on that. And then we'll go back to some neutrals for this area. Because it does get gradually darker here. And with the shadow, I'll probably 
and I do want to warm it up. You know what? This is too, this is too much. I'm gonna warm it up now. We have this kind of a, a tree here, or, or or bush, or something like that. That's fine. That's we'll, we'll get that impression in just a moment. Uh, what I want to make sure I get now is that blue shadow. Okay, so it's not perfectly blue. It's more closer to. It's closer to black, I would say, but I do want it to have a blue bias, okay? That's the, the, the important part. I'm gonna cover this all up, like this, a bit careful around this edge, and you see we're still have, we still haven't touched that right wall at all. Uh, so like this, now here's where the, the important part comes, because now we're gonna connect it to uh, these chairs and whatnot, so I'm putting in a bit more red, a bit more yellow, and we'll connect it to the shape of the chairs. I'd really rather get this part in one go, so that I don't have to go back and darken some stuff again. Uh, here we have another chair, and this would probably be enough to connect the two, like so, like that. And uh, there's another chair here, like this. Then the bottom part, and this, this I think will read pretty well, so no need to change too much around here. Um, what is quite starking now that you figure out is that this wall should be a little darker. So what we can actually do is start darkening that. I don't even have to wait really. Uh, I'm gonna use a, a purer mix of um, blue and yellow, of uh, red and yellow. I keep forgetting the names of paint. <laughs> have to work on that. Um, but in any case, uh, it is darker than the ground, okay? And this is what's really uh, striking here. And that, that's the effect I want to get now. So I will start going over it. But this is going to be a much uh, uh, wetter and less significant glaze, okay? Uh, so kind of like that. And I don't want to miss or lose the the brightness that it has right now with the yellows and the reds, so I will try and preserve that. But I will be careful not to connect these two shapes, okay? Now this is gonna dry much, much, um, much lighter. I know right now it seems a little dark, and I actually, I, I wanna add a bit water to that, just in case, but it looks much darker than it actually gonna, is gonna end up, because this part is really much, uh, much darker. Okay, so we have that kind of thing. Now, I do want to add these shadows already. If I'm here, why not? Just put that kind of shadow in here, like so. And water does make things look a little uh, darker, but you're going to see it's going to be okay. Um, and it's quite, it's a bit of a risk I'm taking here, but I'm willing to do that because it does feel like, worst case, I can still darken that building, so, uh, so I'm good. And we're gonna add a bit of that here. Um, I actually wanna paint around that table so we won't darken that at all. I'm just dabbing that off, like so. Increase some of the redness here. I don't know why, but it feels like the right thing to do because there's the, that uh, table here that's quite red. Connect this now. We have to, this part should be a little, there should be like a, like this, like an entrance to the building. And then the actual table connects to the shadow that I will clarify in just uh, a few s later stages. So this is pretty much uh, it. Uh, what will probably end up happening is we'll do a blue glaze over that and darken it a little more, um, but not much. Uh, in this part that seems to be a little uh, dark will lighten up significantly, okay? It actually surprises me just how dark it appears right now, so I may have messed it up. Uh, we're gonna have to allow this some drying time and then we'll see. Okay, so moving on with the painting, um, this relief section is almost completely dry, but in the meantime, I actually want us to work on the right section. Now, uh, this is uh, really important because it's gonna balance the two out. Right now, we just have a light section. It has no depth, nothing goes on in there. Uh, so what I think I'll do is first, I'm gonna start with this window, that area. Uh, and I wanna start with a bit of a warm shadow. So that's gonna be under, and, and actually I'm gonna need more yellow in it. And that's gonna be the shadow under this part of the window, like this. Now, this shadow connects to a bit of a darker shadow under it. 
uh, that's important to indicate as well and they're gonna bleed into one another and that's fine there's gonna be some movement so I'm gonna place that in like that and then here we go back to some warmer shadows and hopefully we won't lose that um, that darker shadow we just put in so all of this section is kind of in the shadow really um, aside from this part of the um, of the things that open and close that I never remember their name blinds I guess so we have this part here and I have to concentrate so sorry if I talk a little less now on the this side we have a bit of a blue shadow um, because of the, the color of that thing so like this and now we get this short, sort of a window shape okay so hopefully that makes sense we'll la later accentuate it more uh, but for now that's gonna be the shape of that uh, window now here we have a bit of this blue part here we have to straighten that line out because it looks bad right now uh, like so now here there was a highlight I missed but that's fine we may tackle it later on so I'm warming up this mix here and I'm gonna add some of those shadows underneath okay like that and they move downwards the, the light pretty much comes from above so um, it goes like this and these lines it's just a matter of practicing until you can get these kinds of lines to look good in the first try um, I don't get them right the first try many times so uh, as you saw now I want to add this bit of a shadow under that uh, window here somewhere like that and this really brings it out it makes it feel like it's protruding out okay this is really important and this shadow in fact goes all the way here to the bottom uh, like this and then we actually have all of this in the shadow as well and now you see how this starts to balance the left section now it all makes some kind of sense you know before that it was just weird now we have this highlight that I did uh, that I was able to keep I'm gonna warm it up a bit this shadow I'm using right now warm it up quite a lot actually you see how immediately the look of this changes it becomes much more interesting and much better so here we have this shadow because this is the part of the wall that faces away from the light but this part inside is gonna be much darker and I'm actually pondering whether I should put it in right now I think I will so now we have to darken everything up significantly I'm just looking for an open space in the on the palette to to work with very thick paint like this and I'm just gonna place that in and hopefully that makes sense like this I hope the second angle uh, helps you to see some of the process a little better now we do have a strong cast shadow coming in from some kind of a uh, drain pipe or something like that I will indicate that though I won't clearly indicate what causes it so here we go this is the the inside part of that door that's gonna be much uh, that that shows off that darkness uh, and while I have that thick paint I'm actually gonna uh, start adding it under the table as well so kind of like this now this is a good opportunity to do some negative painting around the, the legs of the, the table I'm not gonna get these perfect um, but if I get it close to perfect that's good enough here and the same thing for the bit that's slightly lighter okay so that's that left part here that left section um, something like that and we painted around an imaginary shape uh, there now I want to connect all of these to a shadow on the right but this one has to be a little gray perhaps with a bit of a warm bias and as you can see a lot of it the color doesn't really matter it's more about um, the oh, okay there's a board here that casts a shadow now I can see it. Uh, it it's not really about again the specific colors it's more about uh, the, the temperature okay that's the, the the main thing that really influences how things uh, I guess affect the shadows and and everything you don't really you shouldn't really worry too much about uh, specific colors that's my bottom line uh, it really doesn't matter now I'm gonna connect this to a shadow coming through here 
I'm gonna switch to a bit of a larger brush on that part, add a bit more warmth because now we're painting a shadow on the wall so it goes like this like that goes all the way around the table I would say casts this shadow here and then we have this bit of I'm gonna add that later on I still I'm not sure I want to put in the drain pipe here I may put it um, this is probably the menu box showing off some items or I don't know what it is uh, so I'm gonna add now the darker shadow under the table and I'm gonna make this Reflection, uh, not reflection, shadow quite red, I would say. I don't know why. It's a very gloomy day today, but luckily I have enough light to work with and record this video for you. So that's good. Um, here like this. This shadow. And here, you know what, let's try and get it. I'm gonna grab a, a bunch of paint here. From all, everything. I just want it to be a little muted. And I'm gonna try and dry brush it. There's this kind of a drain pipe that goes like this. There we go. Now we got it. I didn't want it to be too striking, uh, but that's look that looks good. And now we can make that shadow go a little higher like this, and then we'll get this beautiful triangle of light. That that, that looks nice. So I like to put it in. Um, actually, I'm thinking of adding that like this. Okay, yeah, that's good. I was afraid it'll be too much, but it actually works really well. Uh, and now you get to see the right side starting to open up. Now, we do have another one of those boxes on the other side. I'm considering if I want to put in... I think first we'll finish with the first one, because there is some... Uh, I do want to show off some of its frame using this very thick paint here. So there's this frame here. We can do that in dry brush later on as well. But just while it's still a bit wet, I'm gonna show it. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I wanna put in that other one because it actually looks quite good. You know what, I'm gonna leave it like that. I don't wanna mess around with it too much, it looks good. Now I'm gonna grab some uh, thick red paint and I need it to be really thick, almost out of the tube because this table here needs some accentuation of red. This red feels really uh, suitable here for some reason, so I'm just using it. Um, it's a bit wet, but that's fine. Uh, and I think now the sh shape of that table is communicated well. Um, the only benefit of putting in that other shape is that we'll have this highlight around the, this highlight of the, the, ch the table, but we don't really need that, so that's fine. Um, one thing that bugged me a bit was this bump that I got earlier, but we can try lifting that. And as you can see, now it's just problem solving. I'm just going over everything and seeing if there's anything that needs fixing, correcting, and, and bringing out the shape of, of objects. Um, so we're pretty much done with this uh, section in terms of the, the main shadows. Now, I want to put in, and notice my palette is a disaster right now. Uh, I want to start putting in those uh, details on the window that I was uh, telling you about earlier. I think these will really help and they'll give us a better idea of whether we even need to go into more details on the other side or not. Because uh, it could be really neat to just wrap it up like at an early stage, I guess, because it does look pretty good. Uh, so now we have this area full of the, that pattern, like this, and then a clean area, and then go back to the pattern, okay? And I'm not even touching the highlights from earlier, they're fine. Um, I'm okay with them. Bit of both, really. Thick paint. And we'll do the same for this side here. Like so, this is the top. And then this is the bottom, and you really have to start seeing things as, as very abstract. Uh, not too many, you know, details. If you want to create like that, okay? You may not want to create like that, and that's perfectly fine. You may want to be more accurate, but hopefully that uh, still teaches you something new. Now we do have uh, this bit of darker area within. I want to indicate that, like so. And that will hopefully make the shape a little clearer. Um, and yeah, this is pretty much all of the main details of that side, I would say. 
I'm gonna put in a lamp because I see one and it looks really cool and what I think I'll do afterwards you can see this there's this lamp here I'm gonna make it a little more exaggerated so it goes like this then kind of like that there we go um, I may add some opaque paints to it later on um, but really this is pretty much uh, it I think and then there's some details here of the rocks but I think what I'm gonna do now is allow this uh, sometime to just sit uh, and I'll observe it and figure out whether or not I want to add some more details to it okay because I I don't want to add details that are unnecessary and it does read well right now so I'll figure out what is necessary and then I'll do that and then we can uh, wrap up this process okay so I know what's missing and I have a plan uh, this wall needs to be uh, dumbed down and neutralized a little uh, and we're gonna do that using a rather neutral mixture that has a bit of a blue bias now the reason for that is right now it's competing with this wall it's orange it's bright it's starking I don't want that so what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm just mixing up trying to get to something that's more neutral um, and here we go and I'm gonna use that to cover up everything on the left okay like this um, I hope it won't be too dark but right now it seems okay now this is a simple step because I'm just covering everything up okay I'm just allowing this part to be sent to the back okay that's the main weakness right now of this painting now, now when you do these kinds of glazes over areas you previously painted you just want to make sure one thing you don't mess around with it too much okay that's the most important part you don't want to uh, lift back the the layer underneath you don't want to do any of that so that's one thing you want to make sure uh, you do just be careful and don't mess around with it too much I have to stand up just to see it um, and I think it looks good but what I want to do is lift back just some of these areas and this will bring them back because there is an area of that wall that's quite light so somewhere around here this is actually a nice way of doing it I haven't thought of that just by accident I'm now like mm, let's lift because I considered just darkening some parts but then I was afraid it will be uneven but that way of uh, lifting it back is interesting you know what let's let's give it a shot um, I'm gonna lift that and you see I learn uh, here together with you uh, every painting is really a, a learning experience you never stop learning it's insane really uh, now here we also have some areas that I want to uh, lift back up now with lifting you have to make sure your brush is rather uh, dry like this in this area as well and now it starts to look a little more like it now uh, I want to get rid of that part as well like so blend that near the bottom and I think now we're good to go so a couple of other things while this dries and we'll figure out if we need more than that um, what I want to do now is start adding some directional lines okay these will help guide the viewer into the scene so I'm gonna mix this dry, uh, rather dry mix of paint and then I'm just gonna place in some lines to help direct the viewer, okay? Now I wanna make sure that it's, it's dry enough, it appears to be. So just a couple of these lines will really help bring uh, the viewer onto the scene. Maybe another one here. This one needs some straightening out. And maybe we can even add some kind of a thing like that. And this is good enough. It gives us at least the sense of the, of the ground. It was too sterile and empty right now. Now I want to add a couple of other of these kinds of dry brush strokes here to the building itself. Uh, I think it will help bring out some of the details um, that we have here. I'm just wondering where I should put them. I should definitely put bit of a darker spot here along this line maybe even darker like so like that um, let's see what else I think just a couple of these I think with that we're pretty much done with this section uh, I did want to do some dry brush of that tree here there is a bit of a tree 
but I think that will be a little excessive. I don't want to do that. I have a feeling it won't end <laughs> with a good result. I may try and lift. You know what? Now nah, that's that part is gone. I would have wanted. You know what? I'm gonna let this part dry and add some dry brush, and then that'll finalize it. Because right now this feels very blended. I want to pull it just a little back towards us and give the viewers something to stop. Uh, and look at when looking at this part because right now it's it's all blurry. As soon as this dries, I'm gonna add some dry brush and that'll wrap it up. Okay, so as I mentioned, there's only one last bit uh, to add that will pull this uh, together. This is, is gonna be the dry brush on this left side. Right now it's really pushed back because of the wet and wets, uh, but we're gonna bring it back. Uh, now it's easier to do some, the, the dry brush technique in general uh, when you're uh, working from pure paint out of the tube. Uh, if it already dried, then you may have a bit of a challenge. Uh, so if that's something you struggle with, that's uh, something that's worth trying. Now I'm gonna be very gentle with this stage because I don't want to overdo uh, the, the dry brush thing. I just want to add in a few of the balconies that I see here. Uh, you can see uh, th through or next to the windows, there are a couple of these uh, and I think it will really enhance the look of the scene. I'm also adding uh, these gentle shadows that you see around uh, the windows. And once we have that in, I'll really make sure to stop because uh, it could backfire on us, especially with this, uh, when, because we don't want it to compete with the right side, okay? That's the main thing here. So now I'm gonna add this entire window in dry brush. A bit of a risk, <laughs> a risky move, but that's fine. Now it's not completely dark, uh, it's not completely dry right now, it's more of a just dark brush strokes. That's fine. And then finally we have that door here, and that window here, and that's pretty much about it. Um, I do see there is this balcony to the left. Let me just use a bit more of a, a really pure paint uh, to get that, then get rid of some of it. Um, and hopefully that'll look good. This, is, this stage is the most uh, similar to drawing out of the whole painting process because you're really just drawing um, but you can see how already this it kind of brings it forward makes it uh, work a little better now there is this line uh, of that center pole or just a part that's beveled in the wall that I think will make a big difference to show uh, so I am showing that now we have these I don't know, it's like a wired frame above this door that uh, may be beneficial to get it. And you see, you hear me think this through uh, together with you, and it's there are plenty of ways of doing every thing. You can get this, you can physically get this painting now and, and work on it and finalize it in a different way, and it will also work. So there are multiple ways of doing that. There isn't just one way. I think the trick is learning what is the way that you enjoy the most and that produces the best results for you. So I think now uh, we're pretty much done. I don't want to add, there is this sign here, but uh, this is probably, I don't want that. Um, so this is pretty much done and now it feels like we've brought it a little into the scene. Uh, and I think it works really well, the composition works. This part I wanted to touch initially, I won't. Uh, I think it works uh, really well and this is it. Now we can wrap up this video. So I hope you enjoyed this process and I hope we didn't lose too much of that saturation I was talking about earlier, but as you can see in the first wash, a lot of strong and beautiful paints in this one. I think that last bit of dry brush really helped to pull this together, but one thing I would improve is add people. Uh, these would have made this a much better painting. So in any case, I wanna thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you still haven't for more processes like this, more episodes of the Painting Masters and everything. And I will see you again in another vid real soon.